All right. Well, we have just a, a couple of other things here uh, to talk about as we wrap up our discussion of the fulfillment process, but I did not want to uh, neglect those things. And so uh, in the fulfillment process, uh, let me find where we uh, left off last time. I think it's slide number uh, 60. We just wrapped up talking about the credit management process. And, and we are now here looking at this slide, which uh, presents a graph that just kind of <coughs> illustrates uh, at a very high level, of course, the idea that fulfillment uh, interacts with a lot of other processes in the context of our ERP system. And, and let's, let's talk about this for a second here. What is the relationship, and I'll, I'll ask somebody to put up your hand and, and answer this for us. What is the relationship between fulfillment and financial accounting? There are actually three points of interaction. Who can give us at least one of them or perhaps all three? You can do this, I hope. Okay, that works. Yeah, that's that's an example of this. Okay, so uh, and to be very precise about that, that would be post goods issue is a point of interaction. Okay, can you give us another one? What's that? Um, fulfillment. So not goods receipt. That would be true if this were purchasing. Billing, okay, so post goods issue, billing, and what's the third? Payment. Payment, okay, so there you go. So the interaction between fulfillment and financial accounting would be post goods issue, billing, and, and payment. Now, we didn't emphasize this, so I'll go ahead and answer this next one for you. The interaction between fulfillment and management accounting is, first of all, the receipt of the sales order and then the resulting revenue, because we will use the revenue uh, numbers for profitability analysis. And so the interaction between fulfillment and man management accounting is profitability analysis and, and the sales order itself. Yes? The key there is be in the question it asked um, the receipt of what document triggers, and we receive the purchase order. If the question had been worded what document triggers it, sales order would be a perfectly valid uh, answer to that. Mm -hmm. So next question, or, or next time here, a little bit harder. But I, I think if you think about it, I hope um, you can get this. What is the point of interaction that we have talked about between the fulfillment process and the material planning process? Okay, when do we think we will have the stuff available, which, what did we call that check? Available to promise, ATP, exactly. Available to promise is a point of interaction between fulfillment and material planning. There are two other things that are closely related to that that are a point of interaction between fulfillment and, and material planning. Let's say we do the available to promise check and it, it comes out good. What's the next thing the system's going to do? It does something before that. 
And let me give you a scenario. We take in a sales order today, and in order to fulfill the order, we will be shipping this out on December 1st, okay? Too early to pick and pack. It's only November 8th. So what does the system do in terms of those materials? It reserves the material, which does what? What are we talking about when we're talking about that? It changes the stock status of materials from being unrestricted to being reserved. So we might have 500 <coughs> units of something in the warehouse, but 100 of them are reserved for orders that we have accepted but haven't shipped out yet. So the interaction between fulfillment and material planning is stock reservations and the availability check. Warehouse management. This was just mentioned a few seconds ago. What's the interaction between fulfillment and inventory and warehouse management? Picking and packing, absolutely. Picking and packing, and then what else could fall into this category as well? What else did we talk about when we were talking about picking and packing that sometimes might be necessary before we can pick and pack? Suppose the materials are in plant A and we need to get them to plant B for the sake of shipping them out. How, how do we handle that? Stock transfer order, okay? So the interaction between fulfillment and inventory and warehouse management, we have picking and packing, we have transfer orders. Yes, sir, Roger. We, we, I think we talked about some things related to that. Current SAP ERP functionality doesn't really allow any automation of that. We could go in and manually do that, but um, SAP S4, the newest implementation, gives you some analytics features that in fact would <coughs> automate that to the point where literally when you're putting in the sales order, it will check customer prioritization and and depending upon your role in the organization would give you you know like a question to say do you want to do this and it could actually even simulate different ways of handling this and you could pick which one of them you thought was the best one so that would not be functionality that some companies would have but in the newest systems yes that would be a part of this The it it same same idea. Um, a transport order is a type of goods movement. Uh, it's kind of like if we were to draw a Venn diagram, all transport orders are goods movements, but not all goods movements are transport orders. Goods movements are good receipts, post goods issue. There's a whole <coughs> set of things those could be, of which one of those is the stock transport order. Okay. Project systems. We didn't really talk about this, so let's do that here real quick. How does fulfillment relate to project systems? The idea here, remember, when you think project systems, what we're typically talking about, particularly in this context, is the idea of a customer who is contracted to buy something from us, but it will take us a long time to create for them. A uh, great example of that would be the, the football stadium here on campus. Okay, that is a project that is underway that will take many, many months. Well, how does that work as far as the university's paying for that? Is it basically the university says, build me a stadium, 
and then the construction company comes, builds the stadium, and when they're done, ETSU writes them a check for the whole amount. That's not the way that works. Projects fall into the category of what is called milestone billing, where as a part of the contract, there'll be agreements such as, um, and I'll just continue using the football stadium as an example, once we have excavated the site, you will pay us 10%. Once we have poured all of the concrete, you'll pay us another 10%. Once all of the steel work is done, there's another 10%. And there will be these milestones specified that allows the company who's, who's constructing or selling the stadium to ETSU to get money. And what that does is it protects both parties. ETSU doesn't have to pay for the full stadium up front, but the construction company makes sure that they gets paid, they get paid. If you've ever seen like a half-finished construction project, well, what that tells me is that what probably happened was they got to a milestone, they were expecting money, they didn't get the money, so they just stopped work. And so the, this is a kind of a way of mutual protection there. So the interaction between fulfillment and project systems is if we are doing that kind of project, the project systems uh, facet of our ERP system would keep track of where we are in terms of completion of the project and at the appropriate point would generate a bill. Well, billing is a part of the fulfillment process. So the interaction here is what is formally called project milestone billing. Project milestone billing is the point of integration between fulfillment and, and project systems. Procurement. What is the uh, point of interaction here between uh, procurement and, and fulfillment? Trading goods, absolutely. And, and so we're talking about here uh, things like when materials are, are due in. So we said a moment ago that the material planning process played a role in the available to promise check. Procurement also plays a role in available to promise checking uh, because if it's not something we're making, if it's something we're buying, uh, we need to know from the procurement process when, when it is, is due in. So that's the point of integration between fulfillment and, and procurement. And then lastly, what's the point of integration between fulfillment and production? We haven't talked about this yet. It's really something we'll get into more detail in a later discussion. But if we are following a make-to-order strategy, which means that uh, we don't actually start making things <coughs> until the customer orders it from us, then the fulfillment process has to tell production what to make, and then, of course, production has to communicate back when it's done. So you could write on that line, make-to-order, as the point of integration between fulfillment and production. My hope is, um, as you are studying for your final, you will see a slide very much like this uh, in this process and then in the uh, procurement process. Uh, the nodes may be different, but the fundamental ideas are the same. And hopefully you can work your way around the diagram and, and describe all of the key points of integration. My hope is that that's not something that you have to you know, memorize, but rather you can kind of reconstruct that uh, from just thinking through the process and thinking through things that you know are, are key elements therein. So any questions about that, what I consider a very important discussion before we forge ahead? All right, so we really just have one major uh, topic left in our discussion of the fulfillment process, and, and that is reporting. And there are, uh, really remember that there are certain categories of standard reports that we see in our ERP systems. We have online lists, we have work lists, and, and then we have analytics. And remember the distinction here is first of all, a work list is the kind of thing that maybe we print out or we look at on the computer, which basically just gives us a sequence of work to do. Uh, one example of this would be a picking list. You work in the warehouse, you show up for work in the morning, 
and there are 850 orders for you and your team to pick. And you might print that out or whatever have you, but that list is going to be your work for the day and you just work down it. Online lists are things that we tend to create more when we're looking for information. It, it's, a, it's output from the system that tells us about things that are going on, but they're not necessarily guiding our work and they're more created on demand as opposed to being just routinely created on a daily basis. Analytics uh, will dig into that a little bit more, but certainly in the fulfillment process, there are analytic type questions we would want to be answering on a regular basis. There is one reporting option that is specific just to fulfillment called a document flow. And I have often wondered, and I am not alone in this, and wondering why the fulfillment process is the only one that has this. Because when I show it to you, I think you will agree it's, it's pretty great. But we don't have this for the procurement process. We don't have this for any other process, but the fulfillment process gives us a type of report called a, called a document flow. So let's talk about these for just a few seconds here. I mentioned one example of a work list would be a, a picking work list, which is illustrated here in the bottom left of this diagram. Well, you can see up top, other kinds of work lists would be you work as a order entry clerk and you come in and maybe there are stacks of purchase orders that have come in from customers and you've got to key them into the system. Maybe you work in the warehouse and not so much from a picking procedure, but you actually load things up on trucks and other things like that. So you would have a list of shipments that need to go out on a given day and uh, what truck to load them up into or what third party company to transfer them to. You work in accounting and uh, accounts, um, this would be accounts receivable. And so you have to generate bills to go out to customers. All of these would be examples of work lists, and there are a lot of people whose job very much is governed by what the list for the day tells them in terms of work that, that they have to do. And so that's a key part of the fulfillment process. Now, document flow is this guy right here. And in fact, if you are in any sales order transaction related to documents, and you went up to environment, Underneath environment, one of the choices is document flow, display document flow. And it would show you this output right here. And what's really, really nice about this is it shows you every document related to a given customer order and the status of that. So you notice here, standard order, whole bunch of zeros four came in. And the ultimate status of that order is it's completed. If it was not yet finished being fulfilled, that would say open. And you'll notice then underneath that, okay, there was an outbound delivery that was created. There was a picking request. There was a goods issue. There was an invoice. And then ultimately here we have an accounting document that signifies that the customer paid. What I always find kind of interesting about this is you get a really good sense from looking at this screenshot of the fact that an ERP system is a collection of programs that were written at different times by different people. Because it's kind of funny to me that a standard order, when it's finished, has the status of completed with a capital letter C. And an outbound delivery, when it's finished, is the same. But notice, when a goods issue is finished, the status is complete with a lowercase c and no d at the end. OK, why? Somebody different wrote that program, and that's the way they wrote the program. And similarly, the accounting document down here, it's not complete or completed. It's clear. OK? Uh, so you just kind of have to get used to kind of the oddity of, of that kind of lack of parallelism. But the nice thing about this is if I pull up in the system any of these documents or other documents that might have been related to this particular order, they will show up here in this document flow. 
and I can see the status of those documents. And perhaps most importantly, I could double click on any of them and it would show me the details of that document. So it's a really nice thing in that you find one and you can very easily navigate to the next one. And you can understand why this would be the case. Customer calls you on the phone and says, hey, what's up with my order? You can find their order, go to the document flow and say, oh, well, it's down to be picked today. So it will be picked today. So you'll probably get it certainly before the week is over. And so it's important for us to be able to answer those kinds of questions. If we were to look at the, the uh, purchasing process, in your mind you could think, well, you could create a document flow similar to this related to the purchasing process that would show you all of the documents and what their status are. Yeah, you could create it, but SAP didn't. The only process that has document flow associated with it is the sales order process. So can't tell you why, but I can tell you that, that that's the way this works. And so what you would typically expect to see here is you'd see the standard order, you'd see the delivery, you'd see any transfer order, which would relate to the picking process, you'd see the goods issue, which would relate to delivery, you'd see the invoice, and then you'd see the accounting document. You could also see things here related to increase in quotations. If they were a part of this that preceded the receipt of the standard order, of course, you could have an order that has multiple deliveries. You could have multiple invoices. So this would vary depending upon the particulars of an actual customer orders workflow. But this shows us kind of on one screen all of the different documents and allows us to easily navigate among them. So really, really nice feature that is available to us as part of the fulfillment process. And as I was saying, all you need to do is use a transaction to find any one of these documents. And once you're in that transaction and have a document pulled up, you can go up here to environment and choose display document flow. And this is what you're going to get as a result. <coughs> Questions about this? The last slide in this discussion is related to analytics. And it's just the idea, remember we had observed previously that although we don't have a full-blown analytics system in, in, full system in our ERP system, we do have the ability to tell the system to keep track of certain key figures for us around certain characteristics. And so we typically are going to be focused on things related to time here, for example, uh, number of incoming orders last month, last week, last year, returns, sales volumes, sales of particular materials, sales coming from one sales organization versus another, sales in one distribution channel versus another, sales from one customer to another. All of these are different information structures that the system is going to track for us, some of which you see here as an example. Um, we can look at it by material, by sales organization, by sales office, and so on. And so that is a part of the reporting as well. Questions? Well, then, that being the case, we are here at the end of the fulfillment process. We have one more major process left. And then after that, we have kind of just a few minor areas that, that we will talk about in what is left of the semester. But I think we're on good pace to be able to get through everything we need to this term. And so we will call our discussion of the fulfillment process to a close. Questions before we do that, though?